Fear of making a mistake or wasting your supplies can stunt creativity. But how do you know when to persist and when to quit on a project? I share the good, the bad, and the ugly in today's Color Connection with Amber episode. Featuring Happy Pomegranate stamp set and the color scheme from the latest all to new inspiration challenge. I'm starting off today with the color block triangle stencil. My idea was to create a modern Christmas tree with this stencil, which I think is a good idea, but I did not execute it well today and I want to share why and what happened. So I sprayed this panel with a bunch of water, way too much water, and then I couldn't mix my colors correctly. There I was trying to make a really light teal, which I've done a hundred times, but it just wasn't working out for me. So here you can see because I sprayed the panel with so much water, everything ran. It didn't matter that I sprayed the back of the stencil with pixie spray, a temporary adhesive, it just, everything ran. So here I did a wet on dry technique you can see that my green and my teal sections look pretty good, but then I wasn't happy with the color that I used for the red, and I ended up mixing three colors on the paper, which again was a total disaster. So I wasn't feeling the watercolor. I switched over to markers, super messy, just it didn't turn out at all like I liked it. It was time to quit on this idea. So while I persisted for three different panels and attempts, it was time to quit. I wasn't feeling inspired by the design idea and I had to move on. So I took a deep breath and I grabbed the Stripe Builder Stencil and three colors from the metallic watercolor set in Jade, Garnet, and Praseolite. I'm also going to use Red Sunset and Green Meadows from the Artist 24 Pan set. And I'm going to start mixing my colors. So the jade wasn't the color that I wanted on its own, so I'm gonna use Green Meadows and mix jade with that. I obviously wanted to have colors that go along with the Inspiration Challenge color scheme, since that's the focus of my videos, and so I needed to mix those colors. This mixing was a lot more successful than my previous attempts, and I also wanted to have a metallic sheen to these as well. To mix the light teal, I'll use the Praseolite, Seashores, Shades of Purple, and a little bit of the green meadows. I used a higher concentration of the metallic paint in this one, so you'll see in the final photos that this one will have a greater sheen to it than the other colors. I'm also gonna water this down. If you compare this to the Sensational Stencils Plus Watercolor video that I did recently with the Christmas cards, for that one, I mixed my light teal with white because I wanted it to be opaque. This one I still wanted to be translucent, so I watered it down instead of adding white. For the red, I'll use Red Sunset and a little bit of that Garnet. And I'm gonna add a touch of shades of purple to this just to make it just a touch more burgundy, which I know is a little bit different than our color scheme, but I thought it was a little more Christmassy. And I'll water this one down a little bit as well. And I'm using a wet on dry technique. The paper is completely dry and I'm just bringing the pigment to the paper and the stencil. I'll gently remove the stencil and as you can see this is far more successful than my first three attempts earlier today. So I sat down and I did all of these cards within the same um, time frame. So after making something I feel like I can actually use I'm feeling a little more confident and take a look at the sheen here. It's so pretty. Those metallic watercolors are just so beautiful, you guys. So then I had to figure out, okay, well, what am I going to put on this striped background? I decided, of course, I wanted to do two cards, and so I'm going to make a plain panel with the Happy Pomegranates image, and then I'll stamp another one to go on the striped background. I couldn't decide what color I wanted to stamp in because I wanted to do no-line watercolor, so what I did is I opted to just use the watercolors and use those directly on the stamp. Because I had mixed these colors, I didn't think I would be able to color match it very well with my ink pads. So I'll just use a little bit of the pigment right directly on the stamp and stamp that down. You wanna hold it for a few seconds so it has a chance to absorb. And look how gorgeous that is. 
that is amazing. And I feel like that's beautiful just the way it is. Like you could stamp a whole bunch of panels just like that and add a sentiment, a little bit of splatter, and it'd be great. But I decided I wanted to go one step further and color this in. So I'll do this twice in this video. I'll speed it up the second time that I do it. But the second time you're going to see that I was really worried about making a mistake and the result is completely different than how this card is going to turn out. So let's talk a little bit about the watercoloring. So I'm using a wet on dry technique with the initial pigment. So when I initially put down the red, the paper was dry with the exception of obviously the outline. And then as I bring in more pigment, of course, it's now turned into a wet on wet technique. So I've done an initial layer and then I wanted to darken it up. And because that first layer is still wet, it's gonna blend beautifully. Like you can see the edges of the pigment just start to feather out and get a little closer to the center of that pomegranate. This would be a great technique to do with Christmas ornament stamps as well. I think that would also be really pretty. For the green, I'm not gonna color everything in. I do wanna keep some of those white areas and then I'm gonna let the green and the red mix together because where the stem of the leaf touches the pomegranate, you will have a little bit of green there anyway, but I also think that it's just a really pretty technique and a pretty look. So I'll add a little bit of green at the top here because it has those little stems kind of coming out of the, the top of the pomegranate. And I love this, you guys. This is probably one of my most favorite things that I've painted. So I'm gonna add a little bit of slatter, which is also super risky, you guys. <laughs> super risky. It could go bad really quickly with spatter. I decided to add a little bit of red too. I feel like this is way too much splatter, but I can't go back now. Here I have the holiday tag sentiments and just, I just used the packaging to figure out which sentiment fits best in the space because I generally don't think about the sentiment until the end of the project. It's not something I usually plan ahead. I'm going to put that sentiment right over that high concentration of splatter just to cover a little bit of that up and also because that's the best place to put the sentiment. It fits best there. And look at the shine from the metallics. I really enjoyed mixing the artist pigments with the metallics. I think that that's the best bet. The metallics are really pretty, but they don't always have enough pigment to stand on their own depending on what you're trying to do with it. If you're trying to paint a whole image, you may wanna mix it with some other pigments. I just love this card, you guys. So now I had to figure out what to do with these stripes. So I have the nesting frames dies here. I die cut another piece of watercolor paper and I decided I would stamp the pomegranates on it in the same way. I edited some of that out because you've already seen that process. And then I'll go ahead and stamp a sentiment in obsidian pigment ink. Because you're stamping on watercolor paper, you do need to stamp it twice. So this looks nice, but it's really, I feel like the pomegranates get lost. The piano gets lost, the pomegranates get lost. So I decided that I would go around the edge with a black marker to see if I could get it to stand out anymore. At this point, I'm really afraid that I'm going to ruin the card and do something that I'm not gonna like, and then I'll have to start over. I've already started over several times, so I'm being really cautious. That didn't set it apart enough, so I have a piece of sticky back fun foam here. This is the black foam, and so I'm gonna pop that up. That's gonna set it apart a little bit more, but again, the pomegranates still look lost. So I'm gonna go for it and I'm going to paint it, but I'm gonna be really cautious with my painting. And this is another area where I say, if you're afraid of making a mistake, it's just gonna stunt your creativity. I just painted some gorgeous pomegranates and these don't look anything like it, you guys. These just look so drab, so flat. The way that I'm painting them is similar, but I'm just not, I'm not being adventurous enough because I'm afraid that I'm gonna mess it up. I've already cut it, I've already stamped it. I don't wanna start over again. Okay, so let's compare these to the original pomegranates. Look at the difference between creative freedom on the right and being afraid to make a mistake on the left. I was so cautious that it just, I mean, it's nice, but it doesn't look like what it could look like because I was so afraid to make a mistake. So you just have to go for it. You can't be afraid 
I mean, yes, it's a pain to start over and I definitely didn't want to start over, but I don't love this card like I should. So I'm going to, I mixed more paint. That was another thing that was kind of holding me back as I was running out of paint and I needed to mix more and I think I was just being lazy. So I went ahead and mixed more paint. I'm adding another layer and holy cow, you guys, look at what I've done with the green. So here I was really trying hard not to panic. I'm like, okay, let me just work around it. I wet my brush, got all the pigment off. I'm trying to pick this up. That didn't look good. So I stopped. I grabbed a paper towel and lifted it. It lifted beautifully. So I just gently reworked that. I'm going to lift this big blob here and the card is saved, thankfully. So now look, so much better, right? Like you can actually see the pomegranates. They pop off of the stripes and they hold their own. Here's the finished card. I really wanted to add some black splatter to this card, but I was not brave enough, you guys. <laughs> like I just couldn't do it. So I just added some black dots instead and called it a day. I love the shine of these cards. I'm so glad that I worked through the issues that I was having. I think knowing that I needed to quit on the original stencil project and knowing that I needed to persist on the second set of pomegranates was huge and was a big factor in me feeling successful today with my card making. I hope that seeing a little bit of this process was helpful for you and that you enjoy these projects. Be sure to share your projects on the Inspiration Challenge. I'll have a link to that down below.